Hey guys, yep from Team Super Seven Seven Four Seven Seven. Today we'll be talking about hash maps and maps. So let's get started. Before we look at any of these values, let's just start off with the basics. So what is a hash map? So a hash map is um, a set of key value pairs. That's what we need to understand to get started off. So now that we understand that a set of key value pairs is a hash map, let's create that. So let's put a spotlight on that so that we know which part can create a hash map. So we have our basics to get our program started, but then this is what's going to start off our hash map. It is right here. So what you're going to want to do is type out hash map and this is the type you want to put in so the type of hash map you want like um so you want this type of variable i want the string and the integer variable so if you want to follow along in this tutorial you can also put string and um integer inside of a diamond operator next you want to put the name of your variable so to demonstrate um, just this, I want to put on Haas IDs, and that's going to start um, start off with hospital IDs. That's like a shortened form of it. Um, basically, we're going to like make a program that can um, pick out the patient's name and their hospital ID number. And then we're going to set that, um, our variable, into new equals new hash map diamond operator close brackets and obviously with every um, finished program you want a semicolon once you've done that so to put in your string and integer if you're following along the tutorial you want to put um your variable obviously cross ids and you put dot put for every single one of your um ids you want to put in so i put cross IDs dot put, um, for example, a name called Ethan, and you can put comma and just a random number there and end it with a semicolon. Now, once you've done that, you if like you want to test if your program works, let's print it out. So you want to do system dot 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 put line. Once you've done that, you want to put hoss IDs inside of the curly brackets. There you go. Once you've done that, add some corn at the end. And just wait for your ID or whatever you're using to print out. So there we go. We've got an Ethan equals 73493, Alice, and Mary. So now that we've done that, how do we get a specific name? So in order to do that, let's print out, let's say we want to print out Mary's name. So same thing, obviously, to print out anything in Java. You want to do system, dot, 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 print line again. Um, okay, once you've done that, you want to print it out. If you do not know how to do it, just do um, print line and IDs. Os IDs. There we go. And then you want to do dot get. Once you've done that, put some another set of curly brackets. And put um, in the brackets you want to put, let's say, Ethan. And then you want that. Okay. I'll print that. We should be getting um, a representation of Ethan. And there we go. We've got Ethan's hospital ID number 73493. And that matches exactly up here. Nice. Now, once we've done that, let's try um, another variable 
called um, replace. So if we want to replace something, okay, so let's redo this. Um, so you want to do to remove again. You want to do m by d's dot remove. It basically speaks for itself. All it does is remove a key value that you have in your program. So all you have to do is os ids dot remove and then put your string inside of that inside of your brackets of course um who do we want to remove? let's say we want to remove ethan because he's getting released from the hospital so we kick him out of the program oh all right we gotta print it first for us to see what has happened in our program so again, you already know how to print this now. System dot out dot print line dot print and right cross IDs. I'll run that. Now, let's wait for our program to load. There we go. We only have Alice and Mary. Let's take that out. I want to keep these two in our program. So, before I move on any further, let, I want to talk about how when you created the hash map. So, inside of your diamond operator where you put string and integer, only Java classes can go inside of that operator. No like primitive types and stuff like that. And now that we've created like most of the things in our hash file, like most of the basics, we can um say our key values, our keys, what are our keys? Um our keys are like our patient names, but our values are our patient IDs. So yeah, that's what I wanted to cover before we move on to the rest of this. So next thing we'll cover is the uh, thing called put if absent. So it kind of speaks for itself, but if you do not know what it means, if uh, put if absent. So basically, if um, let's say we want to put a Steven in our program, and it, since we don't have a Steven in our program, um, when we put Steven inside the put if absent program, it'll put it in our system. But if we like, if we put it for Ethan, which we already have in Ethan, it will not pop up because it's not it's um, not absent. It's present in the program. So let's um, write this down so we can understand it better. So let's write. Put if absent, but if absent, you want to do, after that you want to do, so curly bracket, let's put Steven down, and then you want to do, let's create another, um, let's say three, two, three, six, there we go. It should be okay. Now let's print that out. And half IDs. Wait for your program to load. Oh no, I think we do have an error. I think you might have to put a um, non-capital P if I'm not wrong. I might have been wrong for that. Alright, um, so one thing that we forgot 
is that you need to um put your um variable there. So we forgot to just put host IDs. You need to do this. So um you do this for basically every single thing. Host IDs uh, dot put if absent and that should be running now there you go now i have ethan alice mary and now we have steven but let's now put a um a program that we already have, Alice, we already have that. What if we put Alice? Let's see what happens. Wait for your program to load. And there we go. So nothing happens because Alice is already in our program. So it won't do anything to Alice. That, so that's what it means by put if absent. So it only adds a key if that key never existed. So if we could do the same with mvids.put again, but it will only replace um, the current existing value rather than the mvids.put. So let's do uh, let's do the mvids.put for replacing the value as we did before. What I want to show you is how it just overrides the value. I, and this can be shown in the program that I'm going to be typing out. I added Steven back to the program. And now let's do mvids. Mvids. There we go. And then, oh, whoops dot put and we want to put in um any value let's say um we want to put in another alice comma and let's say her value there we go semicolon and let's run it. Watch what happens. Wait for the IDD to run. And there we go. Nothing happened. Oh, oh. We forgot nothing happened because the um got printed out. That's my mistake there. Print line and you want Oops. Oops. Run it. Now watch what happens in the ID. There we go. All that happened is um, our program overrided the value for Alice. So Alice, as you can see here, used to be 35820. But we overrided it because we put an, another Alice with a different value. So yeah, let's keep that in just because. And now let's do um, the contains key one, okay? So... Um, the value contains key means like checks if a certain key exists um, in our map. So check if a certain key exists in our map. Do that. Okay, so let's do the contains value key. So in order to do your contains value key, you need to do... Um, so system dot out print line before it. 
we're going to do is this thing. Dot out. Dot print line. There we go. And then inside of your brackets, put Haas IDs. And then put dot contains key. And then put more uh, brackets and let's say um, George. Let's see if George is in our program. And then right there you want to put your semicolon obviously. And now let's run it. See what our program brings us. Give it a second, it might take a little bit. There we go. You can see now that it's printed false because George is not in our program. Now let's watch it print true when we put Ethan because Ethan is in our program. Watch it run. Give it a second to just think. Okay, there we go. We have true in our program. Nice. Now, let's see um, contains value. So, to see if your map contains a certain value, you want to use the contains value function. This is the one of the last basic functions we'll be talking about today that are part of the hash map. So, yeah. Um, so you want to do basically the same thing. So I'm just basically just going to copy this out. And paste it. And put dot contains value instead of contains key. Contains value. And then you want to put some more, um, like, curly brackets and inside those curly brackets let's um put a number of your values so let's say we'll want to put seven three four nine three and obviously we need one more curly bracket and watch our program run and Make a prediction. Will it say true or false? And there we go. We've gotten true because 73493 belongs to Ethan in our program. So what if we just put a random number like there we go. Make, now make another prediction. What will it print out? So if your prediction was false, you will be correct because this number does not con uh, give any value in this program. There we go. Good job on working on your first hash map ever.